Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron and for today's video we're headed to the world of Last Epoch. The good old developers from 11th Hour Games have officially bestowed upon us the August multiplayer update and we have been patiently waiting for it. There is seven questions they are going to answer for us today and we're going to go through all seven. I've also timestamped it in the description below if you want to bounce around. Now, before we get to that, I'm sure you've heard by now that I have officially started a Twitch. And right now I am streaming four times a week, Tuesdays at noon, Wednesdays at six, Fridays at six and Sundays at noon. Always having a good time doing lots of different stuff, playing lots of different games. But lately, Void Night Last Epoch. First link in the description below if you would like to go support on Twitch. Again, it is very fun. All right. As always, I will share my thoughts. Please feel free to share yours in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to support smaller channels. All right, let's jump right into this. Right now, we are on the official Last Epoch website under general news. Multiplayer progress update August 2021. 11th Hour Games, we want to play with our family and friends. And I know you know that already and I know you're working really hard, so thank you. A few seconds ago, I said they're going to answer seven questions. I guess it's more about seven points they want to make to us. Just wanted to clarify. And number one, we're on number one. Ensuring our content up to reaching end of time is polished and easy to play. A major system we are to begin on is waypointing so players can play asynchronously more easily. We've been we've made incredible progress here. We are now playing content together, starting from logging in from end of time and using waypoints to travel across the eras. Quests and scene states are being polished and the town portal logic is working well. We're still figuring out some of the logic of some of the side quests, for example, but most work well and we're happy with them. Wow, that is quite an update. And I love this picture that they posted. So you got your friends right here and check this out. Oh, look, Rhymer, of course they throw Rhymer here. Invite to party. It's going to be great. I want that. I know you know that. So that's number one. And again, this is like great news. It's working great from end of time. It's good. Point two, debugging our party system to ensure play is as smooth as possible. The last 20% is the trickiest. A lot of code that was written early on for the party system was simplified and optimized significantly this month. Parties are now fully functional. That is also good news. When you read things like fully functional, you kind of get the sense like finished. Fully functional, finished. Lots of Fs. Number three, look at that, we're already through two points. Now we're on three. Planning for earlier access to one of our end game systems in order to extend multiplayer play to make it viable for wider testing. For July to August, we decided to go with the arena system and have successfully implemented it. Playing in the arena in a party has a number of new considerations, such as the need for a voting system pr to progress to further waves, how to handle disturbing distrib distributing rewards for multiple player base before progressing, how a single player's death will affect the party and ongoing arena run, and more. We crafted a voting system and are internally testing the arena every week now for two to three hour sessions. That is very interesting that they would start on the arena. And it's so interesting because I didn't even think of the arena. You think of the monolith, right? Like one person dies, you revive them or you complete it, or maybe they don't get the rewards. It's pretty simple. But in the arena, yeah, it's voting on if you progress. What if one person wants out? Do they get out, but you can continue multiplayer? What happens if they disconnect? What happens if one dies? I would think in the arena, if one person dies, the team dies. The idea is you have to play together, right? Very interesting. Our highest group arena ranking is currently rank 53, which is very modest compared to the leaderboard numbers. I imagine someone will score much higher ranking in this week's playtest. How the arena can work in multi environments is a very interesting discussion and happy to field questions below. Look at that. Three people. I guess one, two, four people. No, three people. In, no, there's four. Can't see four people in the arena. What is that? 53? You could do better than that. All right, we're three in. Number four, collecting data. We need to not only be able to monitor and track player activity to help inform good decisions, 
we need to be able to monitor all of our front end and back end systems if we want to provide you a high quality experience like other online ARPGs. Yes, we don't want this to drop broken. We want it to be high quality. Progress over the last month has been steady. There are so many data points, a so many data points, a high quality action RPG wants to collect and how we collect the store them is critical data itself. We are now strong. We are now okay. So they're storing metrics correctly. Okay. Not a big one, but good. They're storing metrics correctly. Number five. This is a big one. Optimizing our server size in order to save cost. This comes in two major forms, server optimization and netcode optimization. We are profiling our server to reduce its size online in order to allow us to put more servers on a single machine. We are optimizing our netcode to significantly reduce the size of the data we need to send between the server and the clients, as well as to optimize our gameplay code to reduce the amount of computations we send to the server in the first place. <sighs> Everybody get that? Let me um, cliff notes this paragraph. They're optimizing. So we have a better experience. In the last month, we managed to reduce our server memory overhaul by quite a bit. 30%. That is a very large number. We're now in the range where it's efficient enough to host our game servers at mass scale. We'll continue to further optimize the server footprint up to release. Now, another thing about point five. How often does a game drop and then the servers get overloaded because there's too many people, right? Any basically new Path of Exile League, Wolsen, Outriders. I mean, you can almost pick any game that drops, even like New World when they drop the MMO and you can get early. Everything crashes. So what they're saying is they are trying to ensure that it can handle the load of people when it scales for mass playing. Good. Number six, getting our idle and potion systems working server authoritatively so you can complete your character build and survive. Why wouldn't the idle and potion system work? That's interesting. We have fully implemented potions and they are server authoritative as well. Idols are, idols are still a work in progress and it's not so much an issue with server authority as it is the case. The idle unlock slots need to be properly synced to the client. Okay. So it's not like they're having really any problems. It's just more about the time. Potions are on the server and now they are working on idols to ensure they unlock correctly. And idle affixes need a heavy Q&A pass and multiplayer play testing. OK, so they are testing potions and idols in multiplayer. But it looks like they need more time for that. And last but not least, number seven, scaling up to approach the ability to test more widely. The ability to test more people on the servers. We doubled the amount of bare metal servers we are hosting. We are doubling the amount of bare metal servers we are hosting and are now successfully using emergency alternatives for potential sudden spikes in concurrent players. 11th hour games, listen to me. My name is Aaron. I run the YouTube channel Action RPG. I cover lots of action RPGs. I know your competition. I know what's coming. This is exactly what you should be doing. Every day of my life, somebody tells me I am waiting to play Last Epoch until we get 1.0. I'm waiting to play Last Epoch until I can play with my friends. I want multiplayer. You need emergency alternatives for, for potential sudden spikes in concurrent players because your concurrent players are going to skyrocket when you get multiplayer. I'm telling you, we're all going to be streaming it. We're all going to be playing it. It's going to get lots of attention from the big guys and gals out there. I like that one. OK, those are the seven scaling up, scaling up to approach the ability to test more widely, getting idols and potions working correctly optimizing the servers to take the load, collecting data and collecting data correctly, planning for earlier access, planning end game system multiplayer, debugging the party system so it's as smooth as possible, and then ensuring waypointing is working. Those are a lot of really good points. 
What are our goals for September? And then we're out of here. Look at that. We already went through all seven. Hopefully this is entertaining. Hopefully you're excited. What are our goals for September? More testing and optimization of the arena experience for multiplayers in a party and advanced supporting systems noted above. Convert the idle system to be 100% server authoritative. Collect additional server performance data. Improve gamepad support for server-side multiplayer. Now you could ax that one out. No, I'm just kidding. Start preparing to add multiplayer to the commuter tester program. This will involve fixing many minor bugs that we are used to that we are used to internally, but would not want testers to have to suffer through. I feel like once multiplayer is at the community tester program level, it's close. At that point, all the big bugs, I mean, they even said it right here, right? They don't want the testers to suffer through what they're going through. At that point, they're getting close. And we have been told we're getting multiplayer this year. We're almost in September. We've waited this long. What's a couple more months? And I can tell you that from this communication compared to the previous one, I think they have already made tremendous progress. But that's where we're at. Multiplayer last epoch August. All right, everyone, that's the video. I want to know your opinion. Are you one of the people waiting to, for 1.0? Are you one of the people that have friends that won't play until they get multiplayer? Can you not wait as I? Let me know in the comment section below. Like I said at the beginning, I've officially started a Twitch. First link in the description below if you would like to go and support there. We're doing our second giveaway right now, which is a free copy of Last Epoch, free copy of Never Return, the new dungeon crawler on Steam, and a bonus item that's worth more than both. First link in the description below. If you haven't joined the official Action RPG Discord, please do so. We're now over 1,100 members, great conversations every day. The idea is to create a gaming community that could jump from game to game together so you never start the server alone. Link for that Discord is in the description. I hope you all enjoyed this quick, actually it was kind of long, Last Epoch Multiplayer August update. Hopefully you were entertained or at least to learn something. Aaron, out.